Live from London, England, it's theCUBE. Covering .next Conference Europe 2018. Brought to you by Nutanix. Welcome back to London, England. You're watching two days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage from Nutanix.next 2018 Europe. I'm Stu Minim and my co-host is Hugh Piscar. And happy to welcome to the program Tim Isaacs, who's the general manager of data services, which really is the, the core products uh, at Nutanix underneath the hypervisor, if I understand right, correct, right. Uh, with Nutanix. Tim, uh, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, absolutely, thank you for having me. All right, so, nice to be here. So, so Tim, uh, this is my seventh dot .next and for a lot of them, it's like, okay, where are we with kind of that HCI marketplace? A couple years ago, Nutanix expanded the, the marketing uh, to enterprise cloud and uh, now has, if I got right, from two years ago, it was about two products, and today it's more like 14 products, uh, right. some organically, some through M&A, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, as it was put out, it's, there's core, which is AOS. Uh, it's the HCI, AHV, Prism Management, and mm -hmm. You know, your stuff is what all of these customers that are attending here are using. Um, I'd, I'd love to get a number sometime as to how many Nutanix customers aren't uh, running that uh, in, in the future. We were mm -hmm. hearing how many are doing more than that. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, give us kind of the, 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 the state of your business. Uh, sure, sure. At, at, at the, you know, no pun intended, core of what Nutanix does. Absolutely. Yeah, so, um, I mean, I think you were sort of referring to our most recent segmentation, you're talking about core, yep. then core is basically AOS, which is synonymous with HCI, and then obviously that includes AHV built in, and then Prism for management, and then Essentials is a several other things relating to operations management, automation, file storage, so on and so forth. So I'll talk about core, and I'll talk about maybe a few things in the Essentials bucket. So core obviously is all of our customers today, right? Uh, it's a layered cake, clearly. So people start with core, then they move up the stack, if you will, right into essentials, and then many into enterprise as well. And uh, core, at its base, is software-defined storage technologies, right, powering HCI. So what we realized quite early on is, look, you know, HCI is all about virtualization, so virtualized workloads. So you got virtual machines; they can be desktops, they can be servers, they can be databases. Um, but then there's also the notion of unstructured data, right? So it's, what about all this file storage that I have? What about all this object storage that I have? And what we realized was, well, we have a platform, we have the infrastructure, software-defined storage, and it was simply a matter of expanding that. And if you think about files, it's just a, another use case on this infrastructure. So we started on our files journey about two years ago, and uh, I think you might have seen some announcements uh, today as well as about six months ago, where we are getting ready to release our object storage solution. So now if I take stock of the portfolio, yeah, and well you got- Buckets, I believe it's called. Buckets, it's called yes. Buckets, exactly. What do you think of the name? Uh, I, I, I don't hate it. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. As an analyst, that's probably the most you're going to get out of me. Got so. you, got you. Yeah, so if I take stock of the portfolio today, you got Core, right, which is hyperconvergence, virtual machines, multiple workloads, and then you got unstructured data via files, as well as soon via objects. And then we also provide just generic block storage for anybody who wants to Hey, I got a database, it's running on a bare metal server. Can you give me block storage? I want to consume it, and I'm going to run Oracle on it in a rack setting. Yeah, sure, go for it, right? So, um, even though most of our customers are indeed hyper-converged, there are some customers who use us as storage only, right? And that's okay. I mean, if that works for them, great. Uh, but the power of the whole thing is, now you can consolidate all of your workloads on a single platform. Yeah, uh, one of the things we talked about with, with Deeraj yesterday is when, when Nutanix launched, there were certain waves that it kind of hit. It, it seemed to be the right time for things. So, you know, software defined before we called it software defined mm -hmm. uh, was there. Flash as a technology was really uh, coming from a little niche product to, 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 to broad adoption. A lot has changed in the, you know, about nine years yep. uh, since the solution went on, and you had a major file system rewrite in uh, 5.10. Uh, I've heard some people call it, think of it almost as AOS 2.0. Right. Uh, to get right. ready for uh, some of the uh, modern things happening from mm -hmm. a technology standpoint, as well as the modern applications that will sit on top right. of it. Uh, Dear has said it's like, you know, the plane flying at 35 miles, 35,000 feet, you know, running at full speed and we're going to change the engine out. So, right, right. Uh, give, give us a little bit of uh, insight as to, you know, what goes into that, so what that took and what that prepares Nutanix and your customers for. Absolutely. So, um, you know, there comes a time in every technology's 
lifespan where you have to re-architect significantly. And that's because of, you know, things are changing, right? Applications are changing, the world is changing, there are a bunch of emerging technologies that come about. And uh, we are sort of in an interesting time where things like memory class storage, NVMe, RDMA, all of these things are starting to get mainstream and for good reason, right? They're, they actually deliver a lot of value. So the file system that we de developed nine years ago, yes, you can make incremental changes, but there comes a time where you have to say, look, I've got to make these big changes. I have to rethink my data metadata structure. And that's what you're seeing. And obviously this will be in phases. Uh, phase one was more about optimizing metadata. Phase two will be about rewriting the file system in a major way, uh, what we're calling block store, to basically take advantage of things like memory class storage. And the end result is two things. One is we'll be able to take better advantage of all of these new technologies. And by doing so, now you're delivering a very different kind of a, um, if you will, not just an experience, but uh, value to your customers. So somebody could be running a database today and there's certain expectations of performance and reliability and, and latency. Uh, in this new world, AOS 2.0, those expectations will be in, entirely different, right? So, so you know, look, looking at you know, the adoption of it, right? So AOS 2.0 basically, everyone's going to run it at some point. You know, everybody is running it already, upgrading it is going to be, you know, in Nutanix style, pretty easy. But I'm wondering, you know, the, the other um, the other uh, storage products. You know, what's the adoption there? How many people are using it? What what are they using it for? Sure, sure. And by the other storage products, you're referring to file storage and things yes. like that, right? Yeah. So uh, files, uh, of all of them, files is the most mature. Uh, we released this SG about two years ago, and we have close to a thousand customers using files today. So not just purchased, but using. Mm -hmm. So a thousand users uh, as customers. So you know, pretty decent, good adoption. And uh, there's also been a bit of a journey here. You know, we started with files being a SMB protocol product. So it had a bias toward Windows environments, user data. About a year ago, we released NFS support. So now the game changes a little bit. You're talking machine data, machine generated data, right? So it's very different. And that's also forced us to rethink how we go about scalability, how we go about, go about automation. You know, if there's a hotspot, the system should take care of itself. Does it go off and scale up? Does it go off and scale out? Does this happen automatically? So a lot of those things started to get weaved into the sort of the fold of the product. So that's files. I would say the most mature outside of HCI. Uh, objects is new. I mean, we're just ready to get it ready to get uh, go GA. Uh, we have done a bunch of early access with a few customers. Things are looking good, right? So looking forward to what we have there. Block storage, so we also offer just generic iSCSI based block storage. That's also been in market for a while. And this has been use cases where somebody wants to run a bare metal database outside. Reasons of licensing or what have you. Maybe it's legacy databases. And I just want storage from the Nutanix cluster. So what we said is, you know what we'll do? We'll carve off a portion of the Nutanix cluster, logically speaking, serve it out as volumes, right? Generic volumes, and you can use this for your databases. Performance and everything is very similar to what you would get if you were hyper-converged. So you're not giving up anything by doing so, other than the fact that obviously you're not in a true hyper-converged form factor. All right, since we're talking about storage, I wonder if we could drill a little deeper on, on, on some of the new stuff. So in 5.10, uh, you're ready for memory class storage, uh, things like NVMe. Where are we today? What is further down the road map? Uh, you know, the storage industry, NVMe, and NVMe over fabrics is right. you know, pretty hot discussion. Everybody's getting ready for it. Is there anything that Nutanix is doing unique there? And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, give, give us what the customer expectation should be. Sure, sure, it makes sense. Um, so I think uh, you know, at the more fundamental level, I think we all agree that if you're on a hyper-converged form factor because you have storage right with compute, that gives you an inherent advantage to begin with versus three-tier storage that goes over the network. So what we're trying to do is, hey, let's continue to milk that, so to speak. And uh, you know, in 5.10, we released, I would say, one, one portion of what we call AOS 2.0, and here what we did was we optimized heavily for metadata. So our metadata versus data model changes with AOS 2.0. And then what we'll do, we'll follow this up with major changes to the data model itself. So, um, for example, now, when you're dealing with memory class storage, uh, you've got to be able to address it slightly differently. You have to be using low-level APIs, things like SPDK, to circumvent the kernel, for example, and go directly into storage. So all those things are in the works. And the net result is going to be 
well, I see higher performance, I see more consistent performance, I see lower latencies, right? And obviously more throughput as well. Now, you talked about NVMO, NVMe or fabrics. Now, NV, the idea there is, look, you got the NVMe protocol, uh, fabrics now, so what sort of a fabric are you building? Uh, because we deal essentially with Ethernet, ours will be an Ethernet fabric, right? So now we'll start to leverage RDMA more. We already do so in our systems today, but I would like to see end-to-end -end RDMA, where you start at the application, and then right through the pipeline, the data path, it's RDMA all the way, down to storage. And even for your replicas, it's RDMA. And now you're talking a very different kind of latency. Right? You're not talking, uh, forget about a millisecond. We're talking about less than 100 microseconds of latency end to end. So that right? kind of sounds like the perfect use case for you know, IoT, you know, heavy data processing. What are you, some, of the, some of the efforts you're undertaking to optimize for you know, for Xi IoT? Right, so IoT, um, you know, there's obviously two pieces to IoT, right? There's what uh, the computing I do on the edge, and then the computing I do after the fact, somewhere else, machine learning models that I can feed back to the edge, right? So um, this, this new technology would apply in both places. Now, when you're on the edge itself, there's certain situations where your real-time processing needs to be real-time. It better be quick, right? So faster my storage, the faster my decision making. And then, so let's say you're able to make decisions faster, inferencing decisions faster in real time. Now you go to the, the cloud, shall we say, where you're doing the long time processing. And there too, it's a matter of, okay, I'm doing all this machine learning. I have a bunch of, say, AI or ML packages running here. There too, there's an angle of time, you know? Uh, if I do this in two weeks and feed, feed it back versus two days, there's a big difference in business value that's being delivered, right? So I think the applicability of all of these changes is across any use case. All right, Tim, want to give you the final word. Uh, you, you know, you, you've got the, the core products there, but what, what are you hoping that customers walk away from as they, as they, as they leave the show this week? So, I mean, I, I would say, you know, dear customers, uh, we are ready for all use cases, all workloads. Uh, we are getting better and better. You will see us be on the leading edge, on the bleeding edge, when it comes to core technologies. Uh, I think we are a first mover. All the things we talked about, we have been investing in. This is not the first time, it's released for the first time, but it's been around. We've been developing it for multiple years. So uh, you can think of Nutanix as someone who's on the forefront of all of these new technologies. And at the end of the day, it's all about your applications, being ready for all of those applications, traditional as well as new, and in your choice of form factor. You wanted to go hyperconverged, great. You want to go at storage only, it's up to you. All right, well Tim, really appreciate the updates. Congrats on all the progress and look forward to watching where things go in the future. Awesome, thank you guys. All right, be sure to stay with us. Got a couple more interviews left here from Nutanix.next 2018 in London, England. Thanks for watching theCUBE. Thank you.